Hampton Roads. It's your girl, Rhonda A. And I'm here at the funny, the hilarious, the sweat is just dripping from your underpits and on your neck because you're nervous. Funny bone, especially if you sit this close because they like to say all the stuff to those people who sit this close. But it's not about where I'm sitting, where I'm standing. It's about this man right here, Tim Lulies. And he, some of you all know him as Big 44, Big 44. And he's here to tell us about this awesome comedy school that's going on. But before we talk about the comedy school, please, sir, you are so funny. You're hilarious. I saw you at Kazi's a couple of months ago, and it, you were just hosting the show. And sometimes you get caught up when a host is funny. You forget to see other people, too. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I want more. I want more. <laughs> so tell us who you are and how long you've been in comedy. What got you into comedy? Let us know more about you. I'm in my fourth year of comedy. Um, I'm from uh, the great city of Portsmouth, Virginia. Oh, Virginia. yes. <laughs> um, Basically, I got into comedy because this is something I always wanted to do all my life. Um, you know, all the way into my 20s, I've, it's something I always wanted to do, but, you know, there's always self-doubt kept me away from the mm. stage. And then, um, you know, after after years of a horrible, stressful job of, like, you know, bill collecting and yelling at people and all that stuff, I finally said, you know, this is the time that I need to do it. So I didn't even get on stage until I was 30 years old, but when I did get on stage, it worked out very good. Um, it, it just gave me great spiritual fulfillment that I knew that I could do this for the rest of my life. I dove right, I dove uh, head on into it. Um, I, I um, performed in New York at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. I've wow. also performed in Hollywood at the Hollywood Improv on Melrose, as well as the Comedy Store in LA. And, um, you know, so uh, my career, I, I've taken a business approach to this, to yeah. the comedy. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't understand that it's, it's the business before the show. Mm. And um, basically, what I teach them, of course, I'm not promising any kind of stardom or anything like yeah. that. Um, but what I teach in this course is the, uh, is the way that I came into the business and the way I conducted myself to cut off a good year or two learning curve off of your um, first several years in the business. So, okay. the likes and everything. And um, basically, uh, what it is, it's an eight-week course. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we meet on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Okay. And uh, the course is 2.50. Okay. After the course is done, you have a graduation performance right here at Virginia Beach Funny Bone. You can invite all your family and friends to come see you for free. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of fun on Saturdays. Uh, we, 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 I teach um, overall stage presence, how okay. to write a joke, how to build a set. Okay. Um, how, to do, how to project. Uh, we also deal with... Uh, what, we also, I also put you through a, a hell week. We also mm. we, have, we bring in... Um, some actors, some uh, improv comics, some general stand-up comedians. Yeah. A gentleman by, uh, gentleman by the name of Marlon Hargrave, which is uh, also an acting coach around here. Okay. He teaches uh, acting. Um, he comes in, so we really script it out. We throw uh, all kinds of different scenarios, rowdy bachelorette parties, um, drunken fights, oh, wow. hecklers, and all that stuff. So that's week five. That's the hell week. That, that, that's, it was also featured on Wavy TV 10. Okay. So, um, you know, you can go online and find that. Um, that, it's a, that's always a big hit to students, and then we actually go out on the local scene and we go through uh, open mics and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, we all build up to your uh, to your performance here on the graduation track. That's awesome. Now, that's that's a whole lot, and that's it's awesome the, the intricacies that obviously are within comedy. And when growing up in Portsmouth, and um, how did that? Like you said, you have an, is a natural thing for you, and obviously there's still some things to hone your craft. What do you think? Um, how Portsman, how did it help you to be a comedian? Just grow well, up there. Well, well I, t I tell you what, there's actually a very good answer for that. Um, it's very definitely helped me with my diversity to reach across to different um, different types of crowds. Yes. Um, good. Okay. Um, growing up in Portsmouth actually, you know, helped me, to, um, you know, build the, my diversity with my material because, mm -hmm. you know, my, my main target audience is working class, black folks, mm -hmm. rednecks, yeah. mainstream white folks, you know what I mean? That, that's, that's my target crowd. Yes. So I'm able to reach over, but I do, I do just as many black shows as I do white shows. That's good. And, um, so I, I'm able to, to reach across. So growing up in Portsmouth, you know, that's, it's, we're a pretty diverse area out there. And, yes. Uh, we get a pretty bad rap, but yeah. I'm proud of my city and, um, you know, I'm proud to be repping from there. And. Um, you know, of course, uh, Wanda Sykes was born in Portland. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, but, um, but yeah. So, uh, but I, I just this is a business that I love. You know, my course um, isn't as much textbook heavy as it is hands on. Okay. You know, I share what, what, what my students really pick up from me the most is my passion for the business, mm -hmm. um, the, the love that I have for it, mm -hmm. and also a continued mentorship after the class. So, yeah. You know, for those that want to continue doing comedy. Yeah. So. Each true Hollywood story of the comedy school, Kazi's and Funny Bone. What are some of the behind the scenes or some of the things that has happened that 
we wouldn't believe or that that's, that's blown your mind or just made you laugh and you're like, I can't make this kind of stuff. Up. Well, I mean, you know, we so some some people um, have a, a pretty uh, how would you say uh, pretty delusional outlook on, <laughs> on how good they are. Yeah, you know what I mean. And sometimes we've seen people come in here and perform at the Clash of the Comics. Um, just really just go, you know, five whole minutes with crickets and no kind of response, no oh, laughs, wow. and or get the lights on and still expected to win. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I see out on the local comedy scene and, you know, from those that I've known, you know, I've toured nationally and stuff like that, um, you know, that there's a lot of comedians with great talent that you'll never see make it to TV mm-hmm. because they just don't understand that their the ego takes the best of them mm-hmm. or, um, you know, they just they can't grasp the business side of it. Yes. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like the same thing to compare to is like um, when you're in high school and you see this, this great athlete that can get on the court and score 40 points a game. Yeah. But he can't maintain a 2.0 grade point average. Mm. You know, that's it's not you're you're, you're not going to get anywhere. Talent alone is yes, not going to get exactly. It. We I see that a lot on the local comedy scene. Um, I, I deal with it a lot. Um, you know, my students that come through here, I'm very proud of them because when they go out into this local scene, they conduct themselves as a professional. Yeah, and they advance pretty quick. And um, it's funny you say that, Jim. You know, those who want a, a stake in this. Now, um, I've been told on an occasion or two that, you know, I can tickle a funny bone, if you will. Yeah. And um, so I want to be a part of this class because, yes, could I say that you were the Barry Gordy of comics? And that would mean that you need to have some scandal, like, between there needs to be a Diana Ross of the comics, and you all have this crazy thing going on with a comedy love child. I can't find any dirt? No. Oh, dang it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just going to... Okay, real quick, just a recap for for everyone who listened to everything you've been talking about and they're getting all excited to sit on the edge of their seats. Tell us the day that we can do the intro class, what time it is, where it's going to be, and um, that's it. Tell them that and Saturday, give them yeah. the, the website or whatever they need. Saturday, February 23rd, 1 p.m. right here at the Virginia Beach Funny Bone. Just show up um, as you would uh, for any other show. Um, the first class is basically an intro. Q and A, because hey, look, I understand two hundred fifty dollars. That in these in this day's uh, economy, that's not easy to come by. Yeah. So I cover everything that, that this course entails and what to expect, and um, you know the fun we're going to have, and um, so basically you come hear about that. We also do that at Kazi's on March fourth. Okay. On, on Monday, March fourth, we're doing that as well at eight o'clock p.m. for their okay. first class, and uh, so you could come in, find out what it's all about, and um, you know we're just going to have a good time. Awesome. Oh, uh, and then you can find it at Facebook.com okay. forward slash Funny Bone Comedy School. Okay. All one word. And uh, you can check that for updates as well as you can purchase a course through uh, VBFunnyBone.com. Oh, that's awesome. So we could, I could say that you would be feeding us wonderful comic advice. Can I use food stamps? <laughs> I'm going to say no. Uh, okay. <laughs> no CODs? No. Okay. 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 Well, you all heard it. We're here at the Funny Bone trying to be funny. It doesn't take hard to do that. It's an awesome thing. It just comes naturally for this man right here. He is, listen, he's going to give you, me, whoever out there, a very, very valuable lesson, that invaluable lesson, I believe. $250 means nothing when you get what this program is going to give you. So, listen, meet me here on the 23rd. I'll be here, the one making you laugh, hopefully. And it's going to be a great time had by all. I'll be accepting donations. And um, that's basically it. Remember, always stay tuned to Fox 43 News at 10. Get your news an hour first, an hour early at 10 o'clock. Check me out. Follow me on Facebook, on Twitter. Don't stalk me, but follow me. That's your girl, Ron Arrington.